Good morning. It's Sunday, August 21st. I'm back from sabbatical and so happy to be with you this morning at Christ Episcopal Church. If you'd like to follow along with this morning's service, you can go to our website at ChristChurchPOK.org. There you'll be able to download this morning's bulletin. If you'd like to make a donation to Christ Episcopal Church, you can do so by going to Tithely.com and choosing Christ Episcopal Church in Poughkeepsie, New York. Or you can send a donation to our physical address at 20 Carroll Street, Poughkeepsie, New York, 12601. We're thrilled that you decided to join us this morning for worship. May God bless you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build up and to plant. The word of the Lord. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, Indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. 
But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. What does God want for us? That's a profound question. The kind of question that's worth asking as you prepare to baptize four children this Sunday. A question that we probably return to pretty often throughout our lives. What does God want for us? Today's gospel reading is pretty clear. God wants us to return to a state of health. You've heard me say this many times. The root word of salvation is salvus or health. When we talk about salvation, we are talking about health, physical health, social health, spiritual health. The woman in today's gospel reading has been crippled for 18 years. She is bent over, unable to look forward. Imagine being bent over for 18 years. You can see your feet, what's immediately beneath you, but you lose all perspective. You can only see a few inches in any direction. You know where you are, but never where you are going. There are so many things that can bend us over. Depression, illness, the COVID shutdown. We can lose our ability to see beyond our immediate circumstances. We can lose our perspective. Faith can bring that back because faith gives us access to eternity. Walter Wink, in his book, Engaging the Powers, sees something slightly different in this passage. He says that Jesus's actions in this passage represent a revolution in seven verses. Wink say, says that Jesus tries to wake people up to the kind of life God wants for them. He talks about the kingdom of God where people have equal worth and all life has dignity. And in the last phase of his ministry, Jesus begins to act this out. So in the midst of this highly patriarchal culture that Jesus lives in, he breaks at least six strict cultural rules in this one passage. The first is that Jesus speaks to the woman. In civilized society, Jewish men did not speak to women. In speaking directly to her, Jesus breaks the convention of men talking to women through other men. Jesus relates to her as a full person. Then he calls her to the center of the synagogue by placing her in the middle of a sacred space. He challenges the notion that only men had access to knowledge and to God. He touches her, which revokes the holiness code. That is the code which protected men from women's 
uncleanness and from her sinful seductiveness. He calls her daughter of Abraham, a term not found in any of the prior Jewish literature. It's revolutionary because it was believed at the time that women were saved through men. To call her a daughter of Abraham is to make her a full-fledged member of the nation of Israel with equal standing before God. He also heals on the Sabbath, the holy day. In doing so, he demonstrates God's compassion for people over ceremony and reclaims the Sabbath for the celebration of God's liberal goodness. Finally, he challenges the ancient belief that her illness is a direct punishment from God for sin. He asserts that she is ill, not because God willed it, but because there is evil in the world. In other words, bad things happen to good people. And Jesus proved all these points, undid all this tradition in just a few seconds. So to return to my initial question, what does God want for us? God wants us to be healthy, not hunched over by burdens, but allowed to stand up straight not to have our sight restricted by fear or insecurity, by guilt or by shame, but to be able to look out and look forward, to be able to dream. And God's dream for us is that we should live in a society where we are treated with dignity and respect where customs and traditions are appreciated, but never placed ahead of the needs of other human beings. Any church or law or political party that tells you that some people have more rights or more privileges than others is not talking about God's dream. Because in God's creation, we are all equal, all deserving of health and freedom, all given the ability to see our own future in God's sight. Sometimes we must lean into God's dream for us before we can see it in this world. And that is what faith is about. That is what the person of Jesus and the tradition of the church is about. Being able to appreciate that God's dream for us is bigger sometimes than the world we live in. And so on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost, we give thanks for those joining our ranks. We give thanks for the great communion and fellowship of the saints who have dared to stand up straight, who have dared to see equality even in the face of injustice because God has a dream for us all and God's dream is bigger than this world. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our bishops, Andy, Alan and Mary, 
for Susan, our priest, for John, our celebrant, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially our President Joseph, Volodymyr, the President of Ukraine, and the leaders of NATO, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Betty, Peter, Julius, Walter, Diane, Joanne, Craig, Charles, Janice, Dennis, Jean, Charlotte, Kevin, Hallie, Jim, Kate, Greg, Stephen, Betty, John, Jane, Jerry, and the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, and for peace between them, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Joe Rich and Peg. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.